Hi, this is Dennis Kelderman with the Cessna Structures Group. Today I'd like to look at a question that we really have uh, come to us all day long in our group and that is, is my damage major or is it minor? And it's, it's one of those things that um, it, it, it takes resources from different areas to, to come to this conclusion. And we know that as the FAA uh, considers this uh, a decision that has to be made by many different individuals, we, it takes many different individuals to come to that uh, decision sometimes. When we look in the FARs, we think of Appendix A, Part 43, Major Alterations, Major Repairs, and Preventive Maintenance. Uh, item B, Step 1, we see airframe major repairs. Repairs of the following parts of an airframe and repairs of the following types involving strengthening, reinforcing, splicing, and manufacturing of primary structural members or the replacement when replacement is by fabrication such as riveting or welding or airframe major repairs. In 14 CFR Part 1.1 we read, major repair means a repair item one that if properly done might appreciably affect weight, balance, structural strength, performance, power plant operation, flight characteristics, or other qualities affecting airworthiness. Or in item two, that is not done according to accepted practices or cannot be done by elementary operations. Minor repair means a repair other than a major repair. Not much help when we are considering a specific repair. As mentioned in 43.3a above, Appendix A to Part 43 also provides us with a list of what is considered a major alteration or major repair. This list is a part of the regulations that is outdated and difficult at times to apply to a particular situation. When you look at the list, you find it's obviously not been revised significantly since its inception April 23, 1964. However, it remains as the list used to help us make the major minor decision. Because of the subjectivity introduced here, it is far better to err on the safe side and execute the 337 when in doubt. That sounds simple enough, but there is another big difference between a major repair alteration and a minor repair alteration. Major repairs or alterations must be performed in accordance with approved data. Considering the difficulty faced in obtaining approved data, either from the FAA or from the manufacturer, many are tempted when on the fence to subjectively decide that the repair or alteration is minor and does not need a 337 or approved data. Our advice? Don't take that risk. If it could be construed as a major repair by the FAA or a future purchaser of the aircraft, figure out how to get the approved data. So in our everyday world, someone has to make that decision. Is this minor or is this major? Let us look at four scenarios that we encounter every day here at Cessna Structures. Number one, a repair facility calls in and believes the damage they have is minor. Cessna Engineering, on the other hand, has determined the damage is major. At this point, the OEM has made its determination. That disagrees with the repair facility. A reputable facility will then realize that they are on their own without the support of the OEM and once in four, most likely without the support of the FAA. The repair facility should then make its decision considering these factors. Scenario number two, a repair facility is reporting damage they believe is minor. After reviewing the damage, Cessna Engineering agrees that the damage is indeed minor in scope. We can provide an email or memo on Cessna letterhead that says exactly that, as well as provide a list of instructions on how to accomplish repairs and return the affected part to continued service. Scenario number three, a repair facility reports damage and are unsure if the damage is minor or major in scope. If we determine the damage is major and the repair facility concurs, they will need approved data to return the part to service if the part is indeed repairable. We may have approved data such as an ATA repair or procedures published in the structure repair manual or in the maintenance manual. If approved data has not been published and Cessna Engineering considers the damaged part to be repairable, they can develop the needed repairs with required drawings and instructions in the form of an 8100-9 or an 8110-3 repair definition as approved data. Scenario number four, a repair facility reports what they and Cessna agree is major damage. After reviewing the pros and cons of having the part repaired, 
The repair facility makes the decision to remove and replace the damaged part using standard shop practices. Conclusion. Well, as you can see, it can be somewhat of a process to make that important decision of minor versus major damage. And once that determination has been made, how to address the damage. We hope this short discussion on the topic has been helpful. If at any time you need assistance in making these determinations, don't hesitate to give us a call here at Cessna Structures. We can be reached by calling 316-517-6061 or emailing us at csstructures at cessna.com. Thanks.